फेब 2014, दिल्ली की सर्दी का एक आम दिन फॉग से घिरा हुआ यह है बुद्ध इंटरनेशनल सर्किट एक ऐसी जगह जहां पहले सिर्फ फॉर्मूला वन ने सेंटर स्टेज लिया है लेकिन आज यहां पहली बार कुछ अलग होने वाला है इवेंट में सिर्फ चार घंटे बचे बट वन थिंग इज फॉर श्योर जो भी होगा एक्सट्रीम होगा एंड समाइम्स एक्सट्रीम कम्स इन डिफरेंट अफ्तार्स I am David Mustaine from Megadeth. I'm David Austin from Megadeth. Everybody, it's Sean Jordan from Megadeth. I'm Chris Broderick from Megadeth. I'm Ryan Doyle from Indiscreet. We, we are from Megadeth. Man, we saw our tower. Michael from Ghost Rider. We are yeah. Black Whip and the Grand. We are Providence. So Rafael Pasherbek here. And I am at MTV Extreme. <laughs> डिक्शनरी में देखें तो एक्सट्रीम का मतलब होता है एक्सटेंडिंग फार बियॉन्ड द नॉर्मल यानी सामान्यता की सीमा पार करना पर क्या होती है ये सीमा क्या है ये नॉर्म्स और कौन डिसाइड करता है एनीवे दिस इज स्टिल अ डिक्शनरी डेफिनेशन इन रियलिटी व्हाट डज एक्सट्रीम रियली मीन Extreme is anything that takes real risk, whether it's mental or physical. Extreme is just pushing the boundaries. Being extreme, I think, is it's not taking shit from anybody ever. For the first time in India. An event of disproportion and extremes is happening. अगर एक तरफ एक्सट्रीम स्पोर्ट्स हैं तो दूसरी तरफ है एक्सट्रीम म्यूजिक रिस्क और रिदम का यूनिक एंड क्रेजी कॉम्बिनेशन एंड इट इज ओनली नेचुरल फॉर दिस डे टू स्टार्ट विद अ बैंड ready for tonight so let's have a ball over there we're going to have a couple of songs to play we're going to have a bunch of bands and then we have so we have a fun evening MTV Extreme is not only about extreme music it's also about extreme sports At first glance these stunts kitne effortless lagte hain and the music looks like child's play You feel like ये लोग इतनी आसानी से कैसे कर रहे हैं बट टू गेट टू दिस स्टेज दे हैव गॉन थ्रू यर्स ऑफ ट्रेन बहुत बार गिरने के बाद चोट खाने के बाद गिव अप करके फिर डिटर्मिन होने के बाद दे हैव फाइनली रीच हेयर एंड आई नो दिस क्योंकि कुछ हद तक मैं भी इनके जैसा हूं like they say every great thing has a humble beginning but 
Playing guitar was something that, uh, you know, growing up in the environment I grew up in, it was very chaotic, moving around all the time. My mom and dad got divorced when I was very young. And we would go from city to city. Whenever my dad would find my mom, my sister and I, we'd move. So I uh, didn't get a chance to make a lot of long-term friendships with people. And the one thing that I was able to keep with me was the guitar. Yeah, I got failed in, in 11th class, in final exam. I got really frustrated. Even I was pressurized from my mother, my father. They said, like, I can't do nothing. I go to my laptop, see some parkour videos, you know. So I was frustrated with the parkour videos. One day I decided, okay, okay, I failed. So let's go get out, get some jumps, and this is how I find myself to totally into parkour. My brother, who was in college at the time, my brother who was older than me, and I was in school, he brought back the whole quadrophenia, popped it in the cassette player, and the first time I heard that sound, it completely blew my mind. And for me, that was a very transformative experience because I think that set me on the whole love for rock and roll. I listened to a lot of death metal when I was growing up. Uh, before that, a lot of Western music in a Goan Catholic household. So there was a lot of Bob Marley, James Brown, the Beatles, and all that kind of stuff. All the good stuff that everybody heard growing up. I mean, so Pretty I much, man, yeah. Including Kishore Kumar Dhanan. Yeah. I was a martial arts tricking national champion in the UK. I got into gymnastics, breakdancing, then martial arts, and then I opened up my own class with my brother, and our students started learning free running, parkour. So then I was like, oh, well, I can do parkour too. So me and my students, we all trained together. And then as a community, we grew and grew. Yeah, I used to always love bikes uh, because all my family got in the history some bikes. Even my grandmother working in a post office after the Second World War, she was uh, riding a moped and tending to people letters. So it, it was always in my blood. Currently, right now, I am a third time world champion of stunt riding. My dad also plays guitar. He, the guitar is a better guitar than both of us put together. Yeah, yeah, people say that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think I've always had it in my blood and I've always wanted to be a musician, but I, I never really picked up the guitar until I got into college. I always thought I'll be like a vocalist. No, a vocalist. <laughs> I won so many duets and all that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> My whole family has been into music, so I guess that's how it happened. And then I saw Parikrama play when I was in school, so one of the first live performances I ever saw. Parikrama was my first exposure to music. When we had started the band, you were one year old or two years old? Uh, four years. Three four years old. Three years old, three. yeah. I was actually studying to be an automobile engineer. I was standing outside my uh, center for my physics paper for my 12th standard, and I was listening to this Megadeth song called Tornado of Souls. I kept on looping the solo, I had a Walkman then, so I kept on looping, 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 so I decided, like, no studies, took a train, went back home, and that's how I came into guitar. Oh, no.
ओनली हिट एक्सट्रीम्स जब थ्रिल का पारा चढ़ जाए थ्रिल एक्सट्रीम का एक इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्सा है हम सबको थ्रिल पसंद मुझे पहाड़ पर चढ़ना हजारों मीटर की ऊंचाई से स्काई डाइव करना तेज रफ्तार का नशा लाउड म्यूजिक ये सब थ्रिल पर ये लोग सब कुछ कर चुके हैं हर ऊंचाई तक पहुंच चुके जिंदगी फास्ट लेन में जीते सो वॉट इज इट दैट गिव्स दीज पीपल द थ्रिल we get a certain thrill from it mainly when you get to practice a certain stunt and you get that stunt done properly that is thrill number 1 second is you get that in front of a live audience i think these are the most two important thrills that we get from stunt riding it is like the man and the machine becomes one and the best thing what i love it is that i turn off my thinking it's like uh, the animal is released from me <laughs> so it's like just throttle wide open and don't think about problems nothing nothing else just you and bike and that's it the part of this playing in megadeth in the music industry that thrills me the most i'd have to say is being able to meet so many different people that you wouldn't get a chance to meet being able to travel to exotic places like india and to be able to bring some happiness to people's lives really is a great feeling just look at me bro like, just look at me bro like look at anyone i come from a syrian christian family and uh, we are from kerala my dad is a doctor my mother is a teacher so when they ask where their son is they just have a look at this so for me it's like a it's thrilling ever since i realized i want to grow my hair and be on stage all my life for me the thrill is that when you make a song you know it takes so much of time to make a song you know around maybe 10 days one month two months and i wait for that moment when someone will just listen for four minute and tell you whether it's a good or a bad yeah. song you know so that moment is most important for me you know so i kind of wait for that moment the thing that drives me i think more than anything is when i put my bass on and i get in the room and we start playing there's that thing that that connects people and to figure if it connects the four of us in megadeth it's going to probably connect 10 20 30 40 50 thousand people together delhi kya haal hai all right please welcome a friend of mine jisne parkour shuru kiya he is a world champion my brother my friend ryan doyle एक बहुत फेमस कहावत है नो गट्स नो ग्लोरी एक्सट्रीम में जहां एक तरफ थ्रिल है वहां दूसरी तरफ रिस्क है ये एथलीट्स और म्यूजिशियंस जब तक रिस्क नहीं लेते तब तक उन्हें पे ऑफ का मजा नहीं आता इट्स लाइक एन एडिक्शन आपने एक बार रिस्क लिया एंड इट पेज ऑफ देन आप बार बार रिस्क लें और हर बार रिस्क का लेवल बढ़ता जाए रिस्क डजन कम विदाउट फियर पर रियल केक उसी से मिलती पर रिस्क के बढ़ने से फेलियर के चांसेस भी बढ़ जाते हैं देन व्हाट कीप्स देम कमिंग बैक फॉर मोर इन द टूर्नामेंट इन वियना आई डिड अ डबल कॉर्क ऑफ अ 12 फुट बॉल मिस द क्रैश मैट हिट दैट हिट द कंक्रीट माय लेग स्नैप्ड द बोन्स केम आउट द स्किन आई गॉट a metal bar right the way down a metal plate 14 screws after i broke my leg i was scared that i would never do this again not everyone takes it to this extreme i'm doing it as a career because i'm trying to prove a point prove that 
A professional free runner, the life of a parkour athlete can be successful. Otherwise, nobody else would bother. I was uh, training in a park. There was a actually. When I threw my body in air, I lose my confidence on that time. So, when my confidence lose hua, so I missed the bar. My bone, it came out. And I have like six screws in my hand. Yes, uh, there is a lot of uh, risk in what we do. Of course, I got some injuries all the time because I crashed a lot, especially when you try some new stuff. Uh, you know, sometimes you need to fall a few times to, to get it unlocked. <laughs> When I started off seven years ago, I was working in a software firm. And when I took this as a passion, people used to say, yeah, maybe he's doing something on the side, let him do. But later, when they understood that I have quit my job and I'm doing this, they went crazy. If I do any other job, any other sport, I'm a normal person. But when I do stunt riding, I become a hooligan in front of them. Well, the risks of choosing an unconventional profession, especially like music, is first of all starvation <laughs> because there's no guarantee you'll ever make any money, which means then you probably have to find a girl to take you in. So now there's risks of a girlfriend and uh, her not understanding because they never do. Why would they? Who would understand something like this? There we go! Come on, gotta see some hands in the air, people! So that fear is there, like, you know, you're getting older, yeah, there are so many young musicians coming in, you know, and really talented people, kids are coming up, you know. So you have to keep learning. So for me personally, I do that, you know, I keep learning, and I, there's so many new things I'm learning all the time. Because we are one of the oldest band, kind of, 22 years. Buddha, okay, yeah. Oldest surviving. Yeah. Surviving band, yeah. <laughs> It's like win some and lose some. You won't get the best of everything. This is what we guys wanted to do. This is what we chose. And we stand by it. I'm sure all of us have made a compromise somewhere or the other, you know. And here we are. I mean. 
when you decide that this is what you want to do, you know, you have a choice. Either you do it full time and sometimes you have to give up everything that you love. People work to pursue your art. Sometimes you end up suffering for it. It's scary, the fact that uh, there are people who are of my age right now and they're like sorted, they're financially sorted, they're stable. So I look at them and I'm like, okay, so I put my effort into a band and that is a risk. The thing is, if you love it, it never feels like a risk, man. You're there because you want to do that. You can't help doing that. So everyone else may see it as a risk, but for you, it's not. It's just that's who you are. Everything is a choice you make. Even the, the option to not take the risk is a choice you make. The option to do a 9 to 5 job and live in a conservative section of society, and that's a choice. Whether this is a risky choice or not, that you know, maybe it's a bit risky, but it's a lot more fun than the straight and narrow path. Do it because you love it. If you're doing it because you want to be famous and make money, do something else. that drives them to do insane extreme things. This is a type of a luck that seems to give them energy to do what they do. And the thousands of people who see they seem to get it. Sometimes, kya ye pagalpan such much zaruri hai? Yes, people do call me sometimes madman, crazy guy. You know, you have to be a little bit crazy to to do some of the things. When I used to start uh, stunt riding in my city and in Poland, there was no stunt riders. It was something really different and people was like, what the hell he's doing? That's what I really love it. I love to be just different person. Anybody doing extreme sport has to be mad at a certain level to do it, at least in the beginning time. If you think about why did this guy start this profession? Because he was crazy in the beginning. I think all musicians are a little bit mad in a way. Just maybe a, maybe a tinge, you know? 
because we're different. What we do is a different thing. You know, I hit things with sticks for a living. I mean, it's not a normal thing to do, you know what I mean? A lot of people look at us and say, probably think, ki, you know, look at these guys, they've been doing this for 22 years. But if you ask us, we lead a very normal life. I mean, this is what our lives are. And it couldn't have been anything else. The concept of having a 9 to 5 job or anything, it doesn't exist in our space of perception. It, it's just not there. Normal usually means conventional. Normal means following a set of rules that a majority section of society has decided is normal. It's crap. Normal is just how you feel. Mad is good. Crazy is good. Extreme is, is good, you know. People want to feel alive. People want to live. And I think that's why people like to get a little crazy. People like to have fun, you know. And if people think that that's mad, then let them think it's mad. You just be who you are. And when I say in my head, I need you to say in my head. Are you ready? MTV Extreme, they saw Ryan Doyle, they saw Raphael, they saw lots of extreme sports happening, extreme fans, and now everything that these guys have been waiting for, Megadeth is going to be on stage. They are the fans, but, okay. but Megadeth Peace. also 
They've earned their fans. They, they have a lot of pride. And till the time they don't hear the fans chanting Megadeth, they won't come. They're ready. When they'll make noise, they'll come. Their ego comes from the adulation they see in not thousands, but millions of people. When you put a man on a pedestal and worship him, it gives him a high like nothing else. But in return, वो अपने फैंस को सपने देते हैं, इंस्पायर करते हैं और कई बार दे चेंज देयर लाइफ्स। I wonder how does it feel to be somebody's god? You know, to be able to pull it off, you know, at our, we're not 21 years old anymore, so we probably take even more pride now than we did maybe 25, 30 years ago because we still have to maintain, you know, our physicality and how we look, how we present ourselves, how we conduct ourselves in interviews on stage and off. So it's, uh, we have a lot of pride in what we do. I have a very big ego and I'm very proud of it. Being an artist, uh, the thing is, uh, your ego becomes a part of your personality. And if you look at any big artist today, it's not whether it's a good or bad ego, it's an ego. It's a unique thing that we are able to do. I mean, it's a gift. I mean, it's not something that everyone is able to do and everyone can do and everyone is willing to do. I mean, it's hard work. When you do a stunt in front of an audience and when you can pull it off and when they cheer for you, it's the ultimate high. It's close to being in heaven. It's close to being a god. Yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. Anyone who comes up and says they've heard the songs and they love the songs, I mean, we do this for them. That's what this is all about, so. I don't want to sound pretentious, but at this age, at this time, I can say it's a feeling better than sex. <laughs> Any day. Younger people were growing up, and they would say, man, I saw you in 1990 on the Clash of the Titans tour, and, this show changed my life, you know, and I look at him like, really? You know, I mean, I saw Kiss when I was a kid. That changed my life. So I know what that feeling is to go see a band and have it change your life. It changed the course of your destiny forever. And so when people tell me that, I get it because if you start out as a fan, like I think any real musician does, and then you become a musician, and then you realize what that impact is, and you're really what you're doing is you're just passing it on to the next generation.
able to say that I helped start a genre of music is great. You know, a lot of times I'll tell some of my friends that, you know, if I didn't take any risks with guitar playing, there'd be no Metallica, there'd be no Megadeth, there, there probably would be a lot of no bands everywhere. For me, you know, some people will say why, and I'll, and I'll say why not. 